All right, so we're recording, so I'm just going to wait for the attendees to come in. So far, we have one, two, here we go. They're starting to come in, two attendees. All right, Joni, we have three. I'll go ahead and get started. Okay. All right. Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Jackie, and I am with the uh, New Mexico Small Business Development Center. Today, we have Joni Griffin joining us, who is a certified SCORE mentor, has a degree in journalism, and is the founder and CEO of an integrated communications firm here in New Mexico. Joni has been actively involved uh, with branding and marketing for tourism organizations throughout the state nonprofits and government entities nationwide, and for small to medium-sized businesses. Joni will present today's topic, which is branding for small businesses. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I will say that we will be covering the Q&A functions uh, to take questions and welcome attendee participation. Uh, so don't hesitate to ask us any questions using that function. We will answer them um, throughout the webinar and at the end. Um, if you want to go to the next slide there. All right, this slide uh, features some COVID-19 business resource links, which I won't go over in detail as we'll send you a copy of this presentation at the end of the webinar. Please visit our website at nmsbdc.org to view our upcoming no-cost webinars or to sign up for our no-cost counseling services. I'll also send up a follow-up email to all attending this um, webinar with all this information. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to hand you. Okie dokie. So um, we're going to be talking about some branding basics today, why it's important to brand and how to get started. But before I start talking, I would love to hear from each of the participants. So Jackie, if you could help unmute them. And if you would just tell me your name, what, uh, what company you're with and what you hope to get out of today's uh, webinar. That would be really helpful. So do you want to just call on them since you can see them and I can't? Sure. Let me see here. Uh, let's see. I have Julie Binko. Are you able to unmute? If not, go ahead and send it in the chat and we'll try and get it going. Can you unmute her or, or does she have to do it? I unmuted everybody. Okay. Or let's go to the next person. All right, we can totally do that. Let's see here. I have Michael Sanchez. Hi, Michael. I'm looking at our settings here just to make sure I can get everyone. All right, give it a go, people. Let's see if that worked. I hit another function to unmute okay. everyone. Julie, are you able to speak? Nothing. Okay, Michael. Nothing in chat either. <laughs> Gotta love technology. And who's our third person? Ah, we have a Q&A. Let's see here. Julie from Silver City, and she has an in. Thank you, Julie. Then let's see here. We have a couple more here in the chat. Here, I'm hitting allow to talk. No, that didn't work. Hmm. There. Okay, so oh, wait, wait, I heard somebody who's talking. Well, I just got a little message. Can you hear me? This I is can. Julie. Yes. Is that Julie? Yeah. Yay, Julie, what do you do in Silver City? I own uh, a building and I have converted it to an inn. Awesome. Um, so I have uh, ability to lodge up to eight people. Good. Well, which is not a lot, but I rent ro the rooms and uh, it, the place is all furnished. So, and I live in one quarter of it. Okay. Well, I'm going to be in Silver City in a couple of weeks. I don't know if you knew that I did the, 
the tourism marketing for Silver City. So yeah, I think I've met you. Before. We'll talk. All right. Um, Michael, can you, I think I just unmuted him. There we go. Michael, can you hear me? All right. How about, can you hear me? Yes. Is that Michael? It is. It is. Yay. Okay. So, Michael Punches, uh, uh, I'm kind of the uh, operations manager for a small uh, custom uh, financial management services company. And we're just looking at how we can um, improve our branding and, um, you know, uh, just be current and uh, relevant to our clients. Great. All right. Then it looks like we have Rick. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yay. All right. Hey, great. Yeah, I'm Rick. I live in Abiquiu and I have my own uh, custom guitar business. I build custom guitars. Oh, my husband needs to meet you. <laughs> and so you sell them nationally, right? And maybe even internationally? Yeah. You know, I've only sold one in New Mexico, but many, many others all around. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Next, we have Tanya. Um, hi, my name is Tanya and I'm the CFO of Taos Mesa Brewing. Um, I don't do much of the branding of our company, but I like to take the webinars and learn stuff so I can have good input with our social media. That is great. I've, I've been to your brewery many, many, many times. Great. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. <laughs> and you guys are doing a great job. All Thank right. you. Tamara Rosenberg, you need to unmute. There we go. Hi, this is Hi. Tamara, actually, Tamara. and I'm, I'm one of the newest members of the SBDC, and I'm down here in Deming, and my background is in, is in marketing, but I really do appreciate everything that the SBDC does to sort of codify it and make it easier to follow. That's great. Well, we also do Deming's tourism marketing. We, we're, we get around the state, and my uh, maiden name is Rosenberg, so maybe we're oh, related really? to Tamara. Yep. No, we're not. Actually, my father changed his name. But um, if you are doing tourism, do you also handle uh, Columbus? Because that's where I reside. Where? Columbus. No, I mean, the greater Deming area, I guess we could say, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, exactly. and then we have one more, and I'm probably going to butcher this name, Uma Kanta, Jenna. I'm not sure if she can hear me. I believe she can, and I think she sent us a chat. Let's see. Yes, she says she is Umakanta Jenna with BGS Consulting Services. I would like to gain tricks in branding as I look forward to have my own LLC someday, and she is from Las Cruces. Wow, this is so great that we have the, like the whole state represented here. Okay, let's turn that off. Okay, we've got like nobody from Albuquerque or Santa Fe. <laughs> I All right, can you guys hear me? I love when I'm talking and I'm muted. You're, you're good, you're right. good now. Okay. All right, so people confuse branding with marketing and advertising. So I just wanna start off with what it is. So a brand is not your logo, although your logo is part of your brand. A brand is not your identity, although it is part of that as well. And a brand is not your product or service. So a brand is a person's feeling about a product a service or an organization. So it's not so much what you say it is, it's what the customers say it is. So if you think, and I'm gonna to point to a lot of different examples of successful brands. I'm gonna talk about some national ones that we all know. Nike is one, we'll talk about Apple is another one and Starbucks is a third one. And if you look at Nike, and I don't remember exactly when Nike really came onto the scene, probably the, the late eighties, early nineties, and their original tagline was just do it. And it was all about empowering people to be active and healthy. And um, their logo is the swoosh. So the brand is not the swoosh, you know, but, but when you see that swoosh, you automatically know it's Nike and you know Nike is all about health and wellness and being active and sports. And that's really the whole, you know, the whole 
thing in a, in a nutshell, I guess I would say. Apple, same thing. Apple, you know, you see the Apple logo and I'm just looking at my desk. I have three Apple products sitting on my desk. And Apple, while they sell computers and they sell phones and they used to sell music devices, um, and now they have, uh, you know, Apple uh, TV and Apple streaming services. Um, Apple has always been about being creative, breaking out of the norm, empowering people. Um, I remember early on when Steve Jobs founded the company, it was about having a personal computer in every home. And so it's not so much the what, it's really the why. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that as we keep going. The other thing I just want to say is feel free to ask questions along the way. I don't need to just lecture the whole time. So if anything is unclear or you want to say what about and how come, just um, either do a question and uh, or raise your hand or chat. So why brand? So an effective brand will resonate with your target audiences and it will set you apart from your competitors. And that's probably the most important thing. So, you know, I'm looking, Julie, you have, a, you know, an inn. There's lots of competitors in Silver City that have lodging opportunities. Michael, in the financial services, you know, not only do you compete with people in your region, you're competing with banks, you're competing nationally um, with all the online services. Um, Rick, with custom guitars, there's a lot of guitar, not a lot, but there's a handful of guitar manufacturers, probably less custom guitar manufacturers or producers. Um, and Tanya, you know, Taos Mesa Brewing, you guys are, I think, also selling your, your beers outside of Taos. I believe you're also doing some distribution, if I'm correct. But there's, you know, there's growing um, competition in the brewing industry. And ultimately, what you're really competing with is anything for people's entertainment dollars. So if you look at the inflationary time that we're in with gas, I just paid $5 and 50 cents a gallon. I couldn't believe it. But you look at everything has gotten more expensive, food, gas, housing. So people have limited dollars left at the end of the month. And so while you're a brewery, you also have music and it's a place to go hang out. So you're competing with anything else that people could be doing with that disposable income. And then, um, so you, we all have competitors. I don't think any of us are in a business that are lucky enough to not have competitors. So it's going to be what distinguishes you from everybody else. And ultimately, a great brand will lead to more and repeat sales. So how do you get started? So crafting a unique brand is really, really important and it takes some time. So you will be getting this presentation um, afterwards. And so definitely take some time, maybe take a weekend when you have some time where, where you can really concentrate to look at what is it that you want your brand to communicate. And I like to think of branding as a marriage. So it's not to say you can't get divorced because you can get divorced in a marriage, but you want to get going with your brand and, and look at it like you're going to be with this brand for the next 25 years. So again, when you think of Nike, Apple, uh, Starbucks, McDonald's, you know, those brands have been the same for decades. And McDonald's is another one. You know, the Golden Arches, they have different taglines come and go, but their basic look and feel has been the same since 1945 when Ray Kroc started the company. And it's consistent in every McDonald's. You know, when you walk into a McDonald's, you know exactly what you're going to get. You're not going to get a filet mignon. You're going to get hamburgers. You're going to get nuggets. You're going to get fries. So, um, so you really want to take some time to create the brand in such a way that the people that you're wanting to connect with will really connect with the brand and it resonates. So you want to ask the question, what is the personality of your brand? And what is it that you want that brand to be? And so kind of the homework here is to make a list of single words, adjectives that reflect the personality and tone that you intentionally want to convey and that you want your brand to embody. And then you want to take some time to prioritize because you probably have to come up with a lot and look at maybe two or three, seven at the most, I kind of like two or three that really crystallize and that is who you are. So on the next page are some possibilities. And there is no right or wrong. It's just the, the brand essence that you want to create. And so I think oftentimes we're just like, oh my God, I don't wanna mess this up, but it's your company, it's your brand, it's gotta be reflective of you. 
And so don't worry about, is it, is it the right words or the wrong words? So, um, so Michael in financial services, I would think professional definitely needs to be part of it. You don't want to be with, when it comes to people's money, you definitely want to know it's solid and secure. Um, Rick with custom guitars, I would think creative is going to be really an important one. Engaging might be another one. So these are just some, these are not, this is not the end all be all of the words that you could possibly come up with, but start to think about, you know, what is it that, you, who are you as a company and what do you stand for and what do you want people to connect with about your company? And then next is what change do you hope to make? So we're all in business ultimately to make money, of course, no money, no business, but that really isn't ultimately why you're in business because we can all make money a thousand different ways. So I'm going to pick on Rick for a second with custom guitars. I would guess that you have a passion for great music and you want to contribute to people in a way with a custom guitar and create a sound for them that they're not going to get if they just buy one off the shelf or online. So you want to start to look at what is it? Why are you in business? So for me, I have a marketing firm and what I hope to accomplish is everything is about helping our clients rise. And that's our tagline rise, because that's what we want to do. We want to help them accomplish whatever the, those goals are. And it varies from client to client. So a business client, it might be all about increasing the bottom line. For a nonprofit, it might be having a really successful fundraiser. For a government agency, it might be educating people on where to get their COVID vaccines or whatever. So when you start to look at it, who are those audiences that you want to reach? And so while, Rick, I'm just going to pick on you again because my husband is a guitar player. So while I'm not a guitarist, I'm the wife of a guitarist and I would potentially buy one of your guitars as a gift. So you wanna to start to look at though your primary demographic in that particular situation is gonna be the people who are guitar players. Secondary demographic might be people related to the guitar player. Psychographics is why do people buy? So again, on a custom guitar, you're gonna buy because you really want to have a sound that you can't get elsewhere. What do, what do your prospects believe? What is important to them? What do they stand for? Do they want um, the highest quality materials? Oh, another good example to look at, at different companies that do similar things. Let's look at uh, Walmart and Nordstrom. Both sell clothes, very different demographics. Nordstrom is high-end designer, personal shoppers, Walmart is all about guaranteed lowest price, but both have clothes. So very different demographics, very different type of person they're going to want to attract, very different stands that those people have. So therefore, your brand is going to be very different for Nordstrom than it is for uh, Walmart, as an example. So once you define your audience, you want to spend some time really understanding the why behind your business. Um, and Jackie, if we can somehow put this in what, what you sent to them, I would, I would offer up for everybody to go on YouTube and look for Simon Sinek, S-I-N-E-K, his TED Talk that he does on the why of a business. And he does a great, great um, TED Talk in five minutes about most businesses look at what they do and how they do it. And then the why is the afterthought. And it actually needs to be the other way around. The why really is the essence of your business. And then you have how you do it and what you do. So as two examples here, coffee. Coffee is what Starbucks does. They also do a lot more now. I mean, when, coffee first, when Starbucks first started, it was all coffee. Then for a while, they were doing CDs. I don't think they do that anymore. But now they offer food. They have gum. They have all that little stuff you can buy when you're at the counter. They have water. Uh, they also have a place where you can hang out. And so while that is all what Starbucks does, providing an experience of connection is the why. You know, and you Sorry, look- Joni? Yes? Sorry, we have two Q&As. Oh, perfect. Uh, both from Julie. First, what is a psychographic? So let me answer that one first. The psychographic is the reasons people buy. 
So if you look at Julie, you're, you're, uh, you have an in. So this, so you're going to have the demographics. So who are the people that are coming? I know a lot about Silver City Marketing. So I can tell you the number one location for you is going to be Tucson. Number two is El Paso. Number three is Las Cruces. Number four is Albuquerque. They're going to be people between the ages of probably 35 and 65. And they like to travel. And when they come to, so the psychographics of the traveler coming to Silver City is either going to be somebody who's looking for outdoor adventure. They're, they're coming for the Gila, they're coming for the cliffs, they're coming for the Continental Divide Trail, or they could be, they like small towns with great arch, that would be another psychographic, or they could be somebody who's a history buff because there's a lot of history in Silver City. So you can have three different psychographics in looking at who you're trying to reach. Second question from Julie, Jackie. Name again of the TED Talk presenter. Simon Sinek, S as in Sam, I, N, Nancy, E, K. And it's a great, great TED Talk. And he looked at Apple versus Samsung, which is, or it might've been, no, actually, I think it was Apple versus Dell. Um, is, is the, it's an older TED Talk. Um, so you'll see some things that are funny because he talks about MP3 players that don't exist anymore. I, you know, iPods and that kind of thing. But what he talked about was back in the, in the dawn of the personal computer age, which is probably the late 80s, um, Dell was the market leader. So, and PCs were the market leader versus Mac products and Apple. So, and Dell had it, I mean, it, and they were IBMs. If you remember back in the, any of you who are old enough, IBMs, and I remember the IBM clones is what they used to be called. And then Apple came on the scene and, and everybody I know that is in computers or technology or software talks about how Apple products are clearly not the best, that there's other technology that's better, but where they won the game is in marketing and branding. And so they have really appealed to people because their whole mission, their whole ethos, their whole culture is about inspiring people to think differently. And that's really their why. And, you know, I look around my office, we're a complete 100% Apple shop. I think we have one holdout that has um, an Android. And so they've really dominated with that. So, so you really want to start to look at, you know, what, what is the why in your business? Why do you do what you do? Not the what. So not the rooms in your case, Julie, not the financial products, Michael, not the custom guitars, not the beer. You know, what is, what is at the essence? What is that why of your of your company, of your brand, and not the what and not the how, because that comes after. Once you really uh, distill it down to that essence, that becomes the essence of the brand. So then what do you stand for? So you wanna create a list of values and prioritize and group those values. You know, you wanna whittle it down to come up with two or three. And I've been in many businesses, I'm sure you have too, where you walk in and they have the mission statement on the wall and it's, you know, two paragraphs long. Ultimately, you want to get this down to just a, a few words so that you can rattle it off. Because if you have to like pull out a piece of paper and, oh, wait, wait, let me tell you what we're about. That's not going to work. Um, in, in billboards, the rule of thumb is nine words and try to keep it to that. And this is a list here of just possible things. So, you know, with us, it's all about results. And so, you know, we, like I said, ours is rise and that's a tagline for us. And um, the R is results. The I is integrity. The S is strategy. And the E is exceed expectations. That's the, that's the ethos of our brand. And then what we do with all of that is we help our clients rise. So you want to get there for yourself. And again, this is a laundry list. There's probably a thousand other uh, words we could come up with, but things you just want to start to think about that really sets you apart from anybody else that's in your same space. And then finally, what is your brand promise? What do you deliver? So your brand promise is that one thing or maybe two that you absolutely deliver that is unique and special to your business. So Rick, I would imagine with your custom guitars, there's nobody else in the world that has the exact same guitar as you. So that's clearly something that you have that nobody else has. Um, for me, again, in my business, it's results. 
no matter what we do, whatever it takes to produce results for our clients. Um, Taos Mesa Brewing, again, I've been there a lot. I mean, it's just, it's the place to be in Taos and you've got great views, you've got great music, you've got great food, you've got great beer. So, um, so you wanna start to think about those things. What are those things that you deliver that absolutely no one else can the way you do in your business? And what is your how, your secret sauce? I love my little unicorn there. So what is it that you do that is so different, so unique, so that they have to come to you over and over and over and over? And once you come up with it, and like I said, spend some time. This is not, you know, you just want to sit here in an hour and put this all together because you're getting married. You're getting married to your brand. You want to have this brand for the next 25 years. So what, what is that? And when, so when we did our branding exercise, um, so our company, I was Griffin and Associates for 29 years and I merged with one of my competitors at the end of 2018. And we did, we went through the branding exercise with my whole team. It took about half a day, you know, all the stickies all over the wall with all the different adjectives. And then when it clicked on the rise, it was like immediate. Everybody was like, that's it. That's who we are. And once you come up with it, you want to incorporate that brand across all customer touch points. So again, if you think about Apple and, you know, I don't know if you can see my water bottle, I'm a little Apple sticker, you know, it's on Apple products. It's everywhere that, you know, and it doesn't say Apple, it's their logo. Another great one is Nike. You know, you're watching any professional sports and you see the swoosh on their sneaker, you know, it's Nike. You see the swoosh on their, on their jerseys, whatever. Um, so you want to get it on your website, on your promotional materials, on your uniforms, on your invoices, everything that is that you have that touches the, comp the consumer, the client, you want to have it out there. So pick on McDonald's for a second. I was at a workshop probably 20 years ago with the chief marketing officer for McDonald's. And I know things have changed now because mostly if you're going to go to fast food, you're driving through. But if anybody ever wants to just walk into a McDonald's, this is what the chief marketing officer said. They have 270 McDonald logos hit you when you're in that lobby, which is amazing. So it's on, it's, you know, it's on the floor, it's on the tables, it's on the napkins, it's on the straws, it's on the bag, it's on the hamburger container, it's in the bathroom, um, it's on the garbage cans. Everywhere you look when you're in the lobby of a McDonald's, you're inundated all subconsciously with their logo. And that's part of how, and, and they, what, the way they described it is their game is to get the most share of stomach that they can possibly get. So with everything that they sell. And then you want to develop your 30 second elevator speech. So it's really important that whatever, um, you know, you talk about the brand is, is communicated. And I always tell my clients, you're going to make more valuable contacts from 5 p.m. to 9 a.m., then probably from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And the first thing when people, you know, meet you is, you know, hi, Julie, I'm Joni, what do you do? And then you're going to say, oh, I, I own an inn in Silver City. Okay, well, now in my brain, I'm going to have what an inn in Silver City looks like. I'm just going to immediately put you in that category. Or if I, and I say, oh, I have a marketing firm, you're going to put me in your marketing firm box. So it kind of ends the conversation. So you want to develop something with your brand that has people say, really, tell me more. So when, you, when I meet Julie, I say, hi, I'm Joni Griffin. I'm the CEO of Sunny 505, and we help organizations rise. And she's going to be like, really? How do you do that? So when you look at how you're going to brand your inn, you really want to look at what is that special thing that you have at your inn that you can't get anywhere else? Um, Rick, with your custom guitars, I would guess you have per perfected something about your guitar that is what you would say in your elevator speech. I'm a custom guitar maker based in New Mexico, and I blah, 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 whatever that is. Um, so you want to really spend some time to think about how is it that you're going to talk about those things, because the more people that know about your company, the more you're going to start creating brand ambassadors out in the world. So here's some great brands um, and interesting on all of them. You know, if you look at Coca-Cola, I don't even know when it started. I want to say early 1900s. Um, and in the 
90s, they for a minute rebranded and changed the Coca-Cola logo. And there was such backlash that went back to the original Coca-Cola logo. And, you know, it says it, it's right there. But Coke also sells a lot of other products now. So they've also expanded. McDonald's, same thing. I mean, McDonald's stand, started with hamburgers and now it's a lot of other things. Nike, you know, it was interesting here. You look at with, the, with McDonald's and Nike, they don't even have to say the words. You just see it and you know immediately. Um, Airbnb, huge disruptor to the industry. So I remember when Airbnbs first started, I want to say it was probably 10, maybe 15 years ago. And it was kind of like for young people to couch, couch surf. If everybody remembers that, you know, and I remember my, my kids were like using Airbnb to, you know, get cheap places to stay. And I was like, that is just so weird. But Airbnb now has become a major alternative and a major competitor in the lodging space. Amazon, some of you remember Amazon started as an online bookseller. And now Amazon, you know, <laughs> Amazon has taken over the world, I think, right? So um, really interesting, you know, again, and Amazon probably at some point could even drop the word Amazon and just have the smiling arrow and we would know that it is uh, Amazon and same with Airbnb. You know, if they wanted to go the route of McDonald's or Nike, they, they could definitely go that route. And that's really when you're looking at this whole branding exercise, in addition to um, kind of the look and the feel and the tagline, and you want to also think about the colors. Um, I always recommend people not do anything that's too trendy and hip because you don't want to have it be outdated in the next few years. Um, you want to think about the font. So you look at, you know, Amazon and Airbnb have very kind of classic modern fonts. Nike doesn't even have a font, nor does McDonald's. Coca-Cola is using a much more historic, um, nostalgic font, but that's kind of come back in again. So all those things go into your overall brand in addition to the words, is how the words are portrayed. And now I've talked way too much and can we unmute everybody and they can raise their hands and ask questions because I'm more interested in what questions you have and what else we want to talk about. All right, I hit for everyone to unmute. Yeah, they're starting to unmute now. Okay, great. All right, it's Tanya. Like Tanya. Um, I have a question. We're about to be in business for 10 years. Yay. And I just wonder how often you should revisit your branding. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think when it becomes stale, if that's, you know, so if your brand is working, there's no reason to redo it. I had my last brand for, for 29 years. And again, Coca-Cola has been around for probably a hundred years, McDonald's for 70 years. So there's not a like, oh, every 10 years you should revisit it. You might want to update a font or a color palette. You might want to um, revisit your taglines, but ideally you want to have the brand forever. I don't think Nike has ever rebranded. Right. Yeah, I agree with that. Branding is a major ordeal. So not to say that you shouldn't do it, but like, I remember when Datsun became Nissan, but you remember that? Um, I remember here in New Mexico when, oh God, what was the name of it? It was New Mexico Educators Federal Credit Union became Nusenda. You know, so it takes some time to transition, usually about a year. You know, so if you think about um, Datsun to Nissan, there was like a year period where it was Nissan, you know, formerly Datsun or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so Tanya, what do you do? I'm the CFO. I do all the- uh, oh, that's right. Tanya, you're a Taos Mesa Brewing. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm all that side, but I also have input, you know, on yeah. our business dynamics and, you know, even down, I like fonts. So not everybody yeah. in my business likes fonts, so. Are you guys, you're, you're canning as well, right? Um, no, we're just starting that. We're going through a massive rebuild and remodel on our original location. So that's why we're starting to discuss this as a board. Yeah, so you know what? It would be a good time if you if you wanted to rebrand, it would be a good time when you're launching the products, you know, because that yes. is the perfect time to do it. Because it's, you know, Cows Mesa Brewing has expanded, our location is new and improved, and now we're selling our beers, you know, so canning and um, and the other thing you can do in that business is because you have so many different beers, each, each beer can have its own kind of brand and identity as well. 
Right. Yes. Yeah. We're looking mainly I'm, you know, the person that introduces a lot of thought to the board and then we kind of all merge on it. So and yeah. try to decide how to move forward. Yeah. But the thing to look at is, you know, with all these new improvements, what is what is that feeling you want people to have? What do you want them to say when they're not there? So, you know, they're they're down the street, whatever, at a conference or they're at work and they're like, oh, my God, I went to Taos Mesa Brewing last night. What is it? that? What is that? that you want them saying. Okay, thank you. That, that really does become the essence then. Great question. Thank you, Tanya. Mm -hmm. Julie Binko. And Julie, I'm coming down on July 7th. I'm leading a workshop at nine o'clock at the Murray. You should come. And so should Tamara Rosenberg from Deming. Drive over to Silver City. Okay, Julie, you're on. <laughs> okay. Um, you described my demographic if you will but um my biggest wish is is to really um convert my into a uh, more sustainable kind of place and so right now i'm looking at doing gray water and um i already have a patio that I've done that's all been locally sourced or recycled things like that that I'm working on that's more of uh what I'd like to promote but yep. I'm sure how to how do you want to say uh, and that that would be the psychographic that you're trying to attract then right so right. people we who all are know, we know who comes to silver right you know. right so you know that really becomes something that you know um, you, again, you should sit down and do the exercise, but it could be, you know, the greenest in west of the Mississippi. I'm making this up. You know, I don't know if that's true, but that you're, you're really about, uh, serving the environment, protecting natural resources, giving the guests an experience of nature. Those kinds of things could be what you start to look at in your brand. And then if, I, if I'm that kind of person and I'm looking online, cause that's where most of us are, are booking our hotel reservations, right? You, you know, and I'm like, sustainable in Silver City, we want you to show up with that then. Uh -huh. Because I'm also looking at um, the impact of tourism on community. So somehow yeah. I'd like to print up, you know, coming and spending money, but <laughs> I mean, but it's also because you're contributing to our community or the history community, those yes. communities. So, like I say, I'm not sure of how to send this message. That's my, where my dilemma lies, I guess. Well, you know? a, lot, a lot of it would be the way you put it out on your website. So, again, in, in the tourism space, most of like 85% of all tourism reservations are made online. You know, they start with the research online. So, you want to put some time and effort into your website and how you communicate that. Okay. Yeah. Hey, it's Great. Tamara. Can you hear me? Yep. Hi, Tamara. Hi. So I missed when you said to go to that event. Where is it? And when <laughs> is it? Because yeah, I will go. <laughs> right, I'm coming in to do a tourism presentation um, in Silver City. It's going to be on July 7th at 9 o'clock at the Murray Hotel. July 7th, 9 a.m. Murray Hotel. And it's, it's being put on by... Um, Silver City Main Street. So it's a chance for everybody to hear what the town is doing to attract new business and tourism and ask questions and all that. I, I need to double check that I can be there, but uh, if at all possible, you'll see me in the audience okay. come up and introduce myself. Tamara so Rosenberg, you. who I'm not related to. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Julie, you got your hand up again, I think. Oh, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> You're good. So Michael Sanchez, let me pick on you for a second. Um, remind me what city you're in. I can't hear you, Michael. Albuquerque. Oh, you are in, oh, you are in Albuquerque. Okay. And which financial services firm are you with? It's, uh, well, our, the one that is our partner is uh, Raymond James. Okay, so you're a Raymond James broker. So yeah. you've got a lot of competition. Mm -hmm. And so it'd be really good for you to spend some time doing this exercise and seeing how you can carve something out where it's totally yours. Mm -hmm. 
and what you provide that other, you know, cause you've got how many other Raymond James brokers in town a lot. Yeah. And I mean, you know, in, in the financial services, you've got a lot, you got insurance people that are getting into it. You've got banks that are getting into it. And then the online space, I think is really competitive too. credit unions. So by really carving out that niche for you of who you are, what you stand for, what do they get when they come to you that they can't get any place else? That's how you're really going to grow your business and set it apart from everybody else. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, Rick and Abiquiu, I want to hear about your guitars. Is Rick still with us? Did we lose Rick? I think we did. You are, Jackie, are you still seeing Rick still with us? Let me look here. I think we did lose him. I okay. see it. All right. Well, that was going to be a fun one to pick on, but I can't pick on him now. Any other questions, thoughts? He's in the he's in the Q and A. Joni, he he's here. He oh, he is here. Okay. Yeah. Um. Oh, you're there. All right. He says he might be muted. Let me look here. Hmm. No, that's his connection. I don't have a, um, so Rick, a microphone to, for him. Just type it in. Um, tell me about your guitars. What's unique about your guitars? Well, not sure what our issue is with Rick. They are ergonomic in design. Okay, so that's really interesting. So I think you've got a huge opportunity there to really brand yourself because a lot of guitar players are dealing with shoulder issues. Um, so they're also designed to have a unique dy dynamic tone. Okay, so again, really um, setting up your branding. Whoop. Can I? Sorry, uh, really setting up your branding to highlight those two features that they're not going to get in other guitars. So that's really the whole point of branding is to set yourself apart, come up with the way others are going to talk about your brand, because that ultimately is always the best way to grow any company is by referrals. So we are nearing the end and um, so next steps, I just wanna uh, remind everybody, the NMSBDC is just such a fabulous organization. So many resources. So that one page uh, that Jackie had in the beginning on all the COVID support, everybody should just look at those because there still is a lot of COVID support money floating around and you might qualify for some of it. And then of course the M NMSBDC offers business consulting, loans, other training programs. So I would really encourage everybody to take advantage of all the free services. And then you'll receive a survey via email after this presentation. And um, I'm Joni Griffin, again, at Sunny505. I would love to, for some of you to send me after you do the exercises, what you've come up with. Because um, I, I would really love to see the before and afters for many of you. And um, I really thank you for your participation. If, are there any other questions before we call it a day? Tanya. I have one question. <clears throat> um, mainly it's about, once again, it's about font, but um, I, how drastically can you change your font or do you recommend kind of trying to find like from your original font to maybe something in between of what you're going to next? I think you can change fonts. You know, I would, I wouldn't do it like every year. Yeah. Um, again, depending on so this is me, this is not the end all be all, but when I think of Taos Mesa Brewing, I think of fun, connection, good times. So I wouldn't want like a really, here, like let's look at the, you guys can see the corporate SBDC logo. Now this yeah. is really works for them because they coach businesses, right? And it's corporate and it's very strong. That to me doesn't work for a brewery. So I think you wanna have a contemporary kind of hip feel to it. Mm -hmm. um and 
So yeah, I think, I think there's lots of room for you. And then the other thing that you have, again, is you have the different types of beer. And especially now that you're going to be canning, each of those can have their own brand and you can get pretty wild with it if you wanted to. And yeah. with the names. Yeah, the names. Yeah, the head brewer does all the names. So yeah. I just get to play around with the fonts more or less. <laughs> no, I, 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 you know, I think you should have fun with the fonts and you want it to stay current because, you know, again, Jackie, don't take it. This is not an insult to the SBDC at all. So I don't mean it. But, you know, this is a the the royal blue of the SBDC logo. Um, I think that's probably reflex blue. It's a Pantone color that's been around for decades. It it's it basically says strong, secure, uh, reliable. Right. That's what you want if you're going for business services. Right. Um, yeah. If I'm going to a brewery, I want to have fun. I want to have a good time. I want to be with my friends. I want to have great food. I want, you know, so you want something that's more um, friendly, more friendly font, I guess is right. what I would say. That, okay. Does that make sense? And yeah, it does make sense. Then, and do you recommend getting like, um, like how many people would you have do this kind of act, the few exercises that you just mainly are a five member board or would you, do you sometimes recommend including some of your managers or? So it's always interesting when you try to do branding by committee, it gets hard. Um, but I would also, the, the other groups that I would maybe consider would be your customers. So you okay. could even do a contest, you know, um, you could, you could, I don't know. I mean, there's all kinds of ways you could get people's participation. Um, again, in a brewery, you have a lot, you know, like Michael's business in financial services, we would not want a really fun, you know, fun font. We want, he, we want him to have more of the SBDC look because he's going to have my money, right? We don't want to, we don't want to be <laughs> fluffy with our money, but I think you also, you have a lot of opportunities with color schemes as well. Yeah. So, I mean, you could even do something, if you wanted to do something really outrageous, you could even like do a Facebook contest or Instagram contest with your customers that they can, you know, you're going to rebrand, have them come up with ideas and if somebody wins, they get a thousand dollars, they get a lifetime supply of beer and they get the notoriety of having designed your new brand, you know? Right. Something Thank like you that. for the suggestions. I, I appreciate could, that. That could be really fun. Um, I think getting input from a lot of people is good, but I think the ultimate decision makers needs to be a smaller group or you'll okay. go crazy. I mean, yeah. I had to rebrand the roadie law firm was my job before I, um, before I started my company. And we had 75 attorneys that had to approve the logo and the branding. It took us a year and a half. <laughs> painful. Yes, painful. So I, I, you know, I think it's good to get input and maybe um, the survey part of it, like you could put, you know, out very wide. So, you know, when you think of words that describe Taos Mesa Brewing, what words come to mind? When you think about colors, what colors come to mind? what would you say the vibe is here? You know, and you could get a lot of that from the broad group. And then from there, you, you whittle it down to what the real brand essence is going to be. Great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. All right, Joni. And then we have in the Q&A, Rick wants to know, does your company offer branding services? <laughs> yes, we do. But I'm not supposed to say that. <laughs> <laughs> not a commercial for 7505, but yes, we do. All right. So with that, I wanted to go ahead and thank you. Let's see here. Ah, oh, he smiled. <laughs> I wanted to thank you for the presentation and valuable information, Joni, and thank you to all of our attendees. I hope you all have a wonderful afternoon and week ahead. Uh, please visit our website, like Joni said, at nmsbdc.org to view our upcoming no-cost webinars or sign up for our no-cost counseling services. The NMSBDC is here to help you during any stage of your business, so please don't uh, hesitate to reach out to us. And again, you will receive all of this information and the recording information uh, via email, okay? All right, Joni, I'm going to go ahead and web end the webinar. It was great to see you again. Okay, have Bye -bye. a good afternoon. Bye.